Hello plant people. Thank you for joining me on my channel. I am Nora the Lekker Queen. Today we will be talking about nutrition in semi-hydroponics. So that is plant nutrition and we will be discussing what's important to know when you're doing semi-hydroponics, how to feed your plants, what are the things to think about, what I use for my semi-hydroponic plants and even things like um, I'll show you how to check your pH if you need to, and just have a general discussion about um, plants and nutrition. And by no means is this an exhaustive video at all. I mean, there's so much to learn about plants and nutrition, and I am by no means an expert. I'm just showing you what I do and the things that I've learned along my journey. So let's jump straight into it. What is plant nutrition? What does a plant need to thrive in a semi-hydroponic environment like this gorgeous gorgeous elbow is thriving at the moment there's obviously no argument as to the fact that this plant is thriving so plant nutrition is something that actually provides all the essential minerals that a plant needs to grow what's a good plant nutrient a good plant nutrient is a nutrient that provides the essential minerals that a plant needs to grow. Now, what are essential minerals? Essential minerals, this is a term that was coined by some dudes, Arnott and Stout in 1939. And it's, it's, it's a list of nutrients that actually helps a plant to grow, that makes sure a plant grows in the way that it should. And there are 12 essential minerals but depending on who you're listening to it can go up to 16 or 18 doesn't matter um minimum of 12 i think and silica so a plant needs to have these and silica in order to grow well there are others that actually come into play and are beneficial for a plant but they're not essential so if you don't have the essentials which are this list over here then your plant will not grow well now what makes a good nutrient and a bad nutrient? Um, obviously a bad nutrient won't have all the essential minerals. A good one will have all the essential minerals, but the minerals also need to be available to a plant. So what's important about a nutrient is actually bioavailability. So I'll try not to make this too complicated, but you can have minerals in, um, nutrient but these minerals might possibly be interacting with each other and not make that mineral that's essential available to the plants so for example the iron might be interacting with the magnesium and so the iron is actually not available to the plant despite it being listed in the list of ingredients so a good nutrient will ensure that the interaction between the minerals and the way that it's been manufactured will make sure that the essential minerals are available to the plant. So the important thing is that the nutrients must be available and they must work in harmony with each other. So what this essentially is saying is that not all nutrients are made equal. Just because the manufacturers say something will do something doesn't mean that it will. People talk about fertilizers a lot and you will notice that I do not call my feed fertilizer. I call them nutrients. So what is the difference between fertilizers and nutrients? In most instances, a fertilizer is organic and a nutrient is generally something that has been purified and is making those essential minerals available in a form that the plant can actually absorb. So when you use a fertilizer, for example, when your plant is living in soil, you have microorganisms growing in there and those microorganisms are breaking down that organic matter. That process itself uses oxygen, but they're also changing that organic matter into a form into a form that the roots can actually absorb so they're turning those elements from non-ionic form into an ionic form that they can actually absorb and this is the problem when with using fertilizers that are made for plants that are living in soil with 
plants that are living in a semi-hydroponic setup. So you don't necessarily have that um, environment where you've got all these bacteria and other items in the soil that help to break down the fertilizer from an organic state into an inorganic state so the elements can be absorbed. So because of that, those elements are actually not available to the plant because they're not being converted from, in or, from organic to an inorganic state. So a nutrient that needs to be used in a semi-hydroponic state has been actually purified and has, been, has made sure that those nutrients are actually available to the plant, hence the term bioavailability. So you can, you can go through the argument of the fact that you only want to use organic products for your plant and not in organic products. And it then, you know, opens up the whole argument of what is organic, what is inorganic, what's the purification process and all those things. And that's an argument I don't want to get into at all. Um, but at the end of the day, you need to understand that your plant needs to be able to absorb these nutrients. And the only way it can absorb the nutrients is if they are presented to it in an ionic form, in a specific form. So, yeah. So when a plant is living in soil, it's got microbes in that soil. And these microbes actually break down the organic matter in the soil and the organic matter that's provided through your fertilizer in a process called mineralization into a form that the roots can absorb. And that is the, the step that manufacturers who make hydroponic solutions actually do. And the most, the other important thing about that process is that they've got the nutrients, you know, set up in specific concentrations that they can live in harmony. The nutrients are in harmony, they're not competing with each other, and they're all available to the plant. So it's, it is quite a complex process, but the take home message here is that you cannot, you should not use a fertilizer to provide nutrition to your plants living in a semi-hydroponic or a hydroponic setup. The plants will not receive the nutrients that they need and your plants will eventually die. You must use a nutrient solution that has been specifically created for hydroponic plants and that way those nutrients will be available to your plant. So you will know that I use a nutrient product called Foliage Focus, and this is a product that's manufactured by a company called Growth Technology. One of the main reasons I really love this nutrient is it's one thing. I'm not mixing three things into my nutrient solution. All I need is this one. It's got the 12 essential minerals listed on here in their concentrations. And when I mix this up, it is pH buffered. The pH is just right. So this really, really works well for me. And if you can get it, I encourage you to do that. But if you can't, there are other products out there. I know this is not readily available in the United States and pretty much outside of Australia. Some places are starting to get it now. I know Malaysia's got an outlet now, but it's possible to find. But if you can't, do not despair just find any hydroponic uh, nutrient that's available where you are and follow the instructions that have, been, that have been provided and that will work as well. But for me, this works like magic. I don't need to do anything else. So, and it's, it's really, really easy. All I do is dilute this five mils per liter into five mils into a liter of water, mix that up and that's generally okay. So um, let's talk about let's talk about pH. Basically, the pH of the solution is how acidic or how alkaline that solution is, and the acidity and the alkalinity will actually influence the ionic state that the essential minerals are in. So you want to make sure that your pH lies where the manufacturers say it needs to lie, and where it you know generally in hydroponics 
Good pH is between 6, 6.5, you can even go to 5.5, it depends on who you're listening to, because that's where you've got maximum bioavailability of the essential nutrients that we talked about before. So pH is quite important. And of course, pH is influenced by a number of things, and you know, that's we, we could talk all day about pH. But if you're just mixing your ingredient your, your nutrient solution right and you're changing over your solutions regularly, you shouldn't run into too much of a big problem with pH. So water, let's talk about water. What water do people use to make their nutrient solution? So there's all sorts of things about water. There's reverse osmosis water, there's distilled water, filtered water, all sorts of watered um, waters. Now, um, I use tap water. I'm just, I'm really naughty and I use tap water. And the reason I use tap water is because I'm trying to make this something that's easily accessible for myself and for others. I don't have a reverse osmosis gadget installed in my house. That's just, that's, I, I ha I'm not there yet. And, um, you know, I did actually get a filter on my tap and I was using filtered water for a while. But I found, you know, buying the cartridges for that filtered thingy, it did add up after a while. And it, it you know, I'm like, this, this is not gonna work. And one time I decided I'm just gonna use the tap water and see how I go. And, you know, I haven't noticed any difference in my plants, to be honest. So all that I do with my water is I get my, you know, this is a five liter container and you can get these containers from anywhere. I had, I think I had, uh, distilled water in here for my iron or something like that. Just anything. I put my water in there and I let that water sit for about 24 hours. And I do that because of course, water that's from the tap has got chlorine and fluorides and all that kind of stuff in it to make it safe for us to drink. But that stuff is not good for our plants. So when you let your water sit, all that bad stuff just kind of evaporates away and makes the water a bit better. And then when that happens, I after that 24 hours, I then put my nutrient in that water and that's what I use for my plants. And that works really, really well. So I'm gonna show you how I mix up a batch of my foliage focus and show you how I actually test the pH as well. So let's get straight to that. So as I said, this is a five liter bottle. So five times five gives me 25. So that is 25 mils of my solution, my nutrient solution that I need to put in there. So I measure out my 25. I measure out my 25 in there and I put that in my water, close all that up and mix that. So that is mixed and that is my nutrient solution. So we are now going to test the pH on this. So I've got a pH test kit. And what I'm going to do is get some solution from there, some nutrient solution. And I want to fill up this, with, fill this about halfway. There. So that is about half way. And then I am now going to get my pH indicator. That is my pH indicator there. Shake that up and I will get about two or three drops of that. One, two. And close that up and mix that. So I'll just mix that. And that is what I have. I will then grab my pH meter and put that along there. So I want it to be somewhere there. And that looks 
that it's it's really hard to show you that looks like it's just about six which is where I want it to be so that looks fine and if it was you know red or too much in that department too orangey or too green I would then use my pH up or my pH down just put a drop in there and check that and make sure that the pH is at the right level and then when the pH is at the right level then I know that my solution is good to use so that that is my nutrient solution and that's what I use for my plants in semi hydroponics and my plants aren't complaining they're happy and yeah I mean I could I could do things differently and there's so many other things you can add you can actually add some helpful bacteria to your nutrient solution as well there are products like that and I will discuss some of those things in later videos but this is just an introduction to what um, semi-hydroponic nutrition is and what are the things you need to look out for when you are starting out and what you can essentially use so thank you so very much for watching and any questions please don't forget to comment below do not forget to like share and subscribe and I will see you in my next video thank you Bye.